A stark warning about artificial intelligence from Jeffrey Hinton, the Nobel Prize winning scientist whose pioneering research helped lay the groundwork for AI. That's why he's often called the godfather of AI. Hinton says there's a, a 10 to 20 percent chance AI will wipe out humans, but made headlines today suggesting at a conference that the tech industry should somehow install what he termed maternal instincts into superintelligent AI. So they'll protect humans like mothers protect their babies. They've been saying, um, we have to stay in control of these AIs. We've somehow got to be stronger than them. We've got to be dominant and they've got to be submissive. Um, that's not going to work. We have to make it so that when they're more powerful than us and smarter than us, they still care about us. Jeffrey Hinton joins me now. Professor Hinton, your remarks have obviously gotten a lot of attention. You, you talked about engineers building maternal instincts into AI models. What would be the purpose of that? What would that do? And is it even possible? Most of the AI experts believe that sometime in the next five to 20 years, we'll make AIs that are smarter than people. And they'll probably end up much smarter than people. And there's very few examples we know of smarter things being controlled by less smart things. In fact, pretty much the only example we know is a mother being controlled by her baby. To make that happen, evolution built maternal instincts into the mother. And if we don't do something like that with these alien beings that we're creating, we're going to be history. How hard is it from a, I mean, just a technological perspective to actually build motherly instincts? I mean, is, it, is, is there an example of that being done at all? Or has that happened at all? The only real example we has, have is evolution. Evolution obviously made a pretty good job of it with mothers. Um, people haven't been focusing on that. They've been focusing on making these things more intelligent. But intelligence is just one part of a being. We need to make them have empathy towards us. And we don't know how to do that yet. But evolution managed it, and we should be able to do it too. You know, we've heard from so many people, leaders in the tech field, who say, well, look, if the U.S. doesn't win this this war, this battle for dominance in the AI world, uh, you know, a, a rogue nation, uh, a, a country that's an enemy of the United States, China, Russia, they're going to have AI. If, if China is not developing AI that has maternal instincts and the U.S. is the only one who has maternal instincts, does that not make them... Uh, I mean, is that not making them weaker in this war against for dominance? Well, there are many risks of AI, like cyber attacks and loss of jobs and making nasty viruses. But one of the risks is this existential threat that AI will take over. And for that threat, all the countries will collaborate because they're all in the same boat. No country wants AI to take over, just as the USSR and the Americans collaborated at the height of the Cold War, um, countries will collaborate on how to prevent AI from taking over from people. Do you, I mean, do you believe human nature won't encourage some leader somewhere to, or some government somewhere to, to believe that they can control it, whether or not that's actually possible? Well, we have a nice example in the States of a government that's determined to control it. Um, I don't think that's going to work. It may, it may work against other countries, but when AI becomes smarter than people, that's just not going to work. This whole idea that people need to be dominant and the AI needs to be submissive, that's the kind of tech bro idea that I don't think will work when they're much smarter than us. Do you, do you, really believe, do you still believe it, it, that 10 to 20% chance of AIs wiping out humans is possible? Oh, yes. If we, don't, if we can't figure out a solution, to how we can still be around when they're much smarter than us and much more powerful than us, we'll be toast. What do you think, I, I mean, it's stunning to me that this technology, I mean, it's already changing things, but the, the tidal wave of change that we are going to be seeing shortly and are already seeing, that it's being run by people who are not elected. These are people, you know, who are making billions of dollars doing this. Um, nobody ever really elected them. There's been no consensus agreement that, yes, this is good for humanity. Do you think the average person, and I include myself in that grouping, understands what is about to happen here? No, I think they don't. And I think it's important for the public to understand it. We need a counter pressure to the tech bros who are saying there should be no regulations on AI. Um, 
And also we need the countries to understand they need to collaborate on how to avoid the existential threat. Does, what do you think it does to initiative for, you know, I have a, I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. I'm, I'm very worried about, you know, what world they're going to have in 10 years when, if there's machines that do everything better than humans do, what's the initiative for people to strive to become good at something? One thing we know about mothers is mothers genuinely care about their babies and they do whatever they can to make life interesting for the babies and to make the babies grow and realize their full potential. So if we have super intelligent AI looking after us, we may be able to get the same thing. Mm. Jeffrey Hinton, it's a real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.